All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I am going to get some homeowner hands-on here. He's been helicoptering all morning, and I don't mind it because he's a nice guy. He's a very nice guy. And we're going to, for his first time ever in his career, now he's retired, he's going to press Mega Press G. Here we go. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Mike Dyke. I'm a master plumber and licensed HVAC contractor in the states of New York, South Carolina, and Florida. And today, I'm taking you on an HVAC replacement for a new customer, a YouTube subscriber in Farmingdale, New York, which is out on Long Island, about an hour drive from here. Check this out. You're not going to want to miss it. Sometimes, we don't just put in Bosch. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Pleasure meeting you. Man. You as well? I'm doing. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Not bad. Not bad? Yeah. Why not great? I'm in fucking pain, Mike. What's wrong? You're in pain. Too bad knees. I need replaced my shoulders. Retired from a year and a half. No knee pads, huh? Yeah, knee pads. You use knee pads? Yeah, wear and tear. So it doesn't really fucking matter wearing knee pads or not. Wear and tear, brother. That's all. I hear you. Do the basement entrance. Okay. okay. Let's go see. All right. Got a nice big backyard here too. Thanks. Very nice. I just started fixing up the fucking house again. I, I hear it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to take out this 80% gas-fired furnace, this April Air media uh, cabinet, this 50-gallon Home Depot GE water heater. Damn. But look at the perfection that was done here, by the way. Look at this. Hold on, it gets better, right? It may be hard to compete with what the quality of work that was done here. Look at this. Split ring hangers. Like you can hang Godzilla from these from the piping. Amazing. All right. Yeah, three inch flue with 40,000 BTUs. Not to code, but this is getting eliminated. We're going to take the tank style water heater out and right on the wall here we're going to put in the ream iconic uh condensing gas tankless water heater. all right so i have the gas isolated there's a gas cock right there that's off and it's feeding this three quarters feeding the dryer the furnace and the water heater i don't know what's up with that but disconnected the gas Opened up my valve with a uh, wash machine hose to the pump. I was gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, I was gonna use the 50 foot hose and I'm like, you know what? Let me just shove the pump right there. One less thing to have to worry about and clean up when we're done. Um, I got the hot and cold, domestic hot and cold isolated. You can tell what, um, very easily which one the cold water is. It's always the darker looking pipe. So this is domestic cold water. The lighter color pipe is domestic um, hot water. We're gonna leave this open. I'm gonna cut there, and we're gonna put a coupling there and run straight across with a length of three quarter inch L and come down here, and that's gonna hook up to our tankless water heater. Daniel right now is working on dissecting the return plenum going to this gas-fired furnace that we're taking to out today as well. So you guys are getting a two for one special talking about water filtration but you guys are gonna get a two-for-one special today we're doing the ream iconic condensing water heater with a ream hvac system not a heat pump straight cool all right sorry guys it's 9 35 haven't recorded much I'm trying to hustle here we have the supply transition in place daniel did an amazing job with the measuring for our fabricator it looks perfect we're using the mastic tape to seal the connection between the evaporator coil and our supply plenum. He's gonna need a chimney liner in there. 
for the 80% gas furnace that uh, we're replacing with this one. Our gravity drain is just barely going to make it. Um, we do have a backup. We got a, uh, a condensate neutralizer pump that's going to go somewhere there for the Ream Iconic tankless water heater that's sitting right there. Beautiful machine. Very, very beautiful machine. Okay. Peter and Daniel are working on the return transition going to our Honeywell 20 by 25 by 4 filter media cabinet. Looking great. Really is looking great. Well, I've really been neglecting the community of subscribers and just viewers. It's a uh, 11 17. This is what I got done. Yeah, it lines up perfectly. We extended the three quarter inch L domestic hot water supply line from this that went that away and through a Vega three quarter inch press coupling right there, shot across with a 10 foot length, cut it back a little short, made a cat right there with a two by four, screwed it in with some three inch exterior drywall screws, put a three quarter inch copper strap right there, came down and going with the flow and the just the way the rest of the plumbing is secured in this home. I use a uh, three eighth threaded rod, the three quarter split ring hanger on my domestic hot water. I did the same exact thing on my domestic cold. I wanted to be at the same elevation of the floor with the threaded rod, but I had that right there and it wasn't really cooperating to drill it. So dropped that down a little bit. My domestic cold picks up from this T right here, which is right off the water main. We threw a strap right there onto that cat. It was broken before. Came down, three quarter inch, elbowed, and I beelined it right to it. It was perfect. And if you stand back a little bit, it is dead on. Perfect. I was gonna beeline it here, but the homeowner standing right next to me was like, Mikey, why don't you square it off? And that's exactly what I did. Looks, as they say, tits. Daniel's got some, some toys. We have a hose cap. That is not gonna work with that because we have different threads. Or maybe not. Look at that. That's what we did for something. Or if you want this. Nah. Okay, let's see how that works. Opening up the domestic cold water supply. Going to our water heater. Open up that laundry sink hot water, please. Let's open up our opposite side. There we go. Flush all the water through the water heater. We still gotta do electric, exhaust, combustion air intake, and gas. Gas is gonna be easy peasy, come straight across, tie it into right there. And we're gonna use the Vega Mega Press G for gas. The green label is going to be tits soon. Okay, okay. 11.45, ladies and gentlemen. I'll show you that in a, in a second, but we're going to put the homeowner to work in a hot minute. So we extended the three-quarter inch uh, black gas, gas pipe across, used another split ring hanger. I was going to use some Kendorf. We have the, the, uh, the clamps in here, but you know what? There's no other unistrut on the wall except for <clears throat> that piece right there. <clears throat> and I don't know. I think the split ring hangers. Oh, and that piece right there. I think the split ring hangers here show the type of homeowner, right? His quality of work that he did in his professional career. You guys, a uh, retired local plumber, right? Local one plumber, right? So that's New York City. And he specialized in high rises. And let me tell you something, those guys, man, they don't, they're not built like that anymore. <laughs> I tell you, they're not, they're not built like that anymore. So when you see threaded rod and split ring hangers, you know, you were working in New York city because that's all you did all day long. And I'm sure in the first early years of his career, he was just laying damn cast iron day after day, hour after hour, all underground digging trenches. You know what's funny? I think you'll appreciate this story. It's kind of like sad at the same time. 
So I interviewed a, uh, a younger gentleman, um, 20 years old, I think, maybe 19. And uh, he works right now for an, ele an electrical contracting company in, in the city. And he schleps to the city every day on a train for, you know, 15 minutes, one way, back and forth. And um, he interviews because he, he doesn't feel he's getting anywhere. He's been there for about a year. Okay? Me and, you all, we're, we're, me and you both know where this is going. But he's been there for a year. This is his third um, employee that he's had in his life. The first one was nothing related to the trades, but the last one was an electrical outfit. He was there for a year. He's at this one for a year, and he feels he's not getting anywhere. And I said, um, so why do you want to switch to plumbing and HVAC? I was like, well, I want to be a plumber because it's, I don't know, I feel that I'll be accomplishing more. I was like, well, you don't feel like you're, like, you don't like electrical? I was like, no, I love electrical. I just feel like I'm going nowhere. I said, let me ask you a question. You've been there for a year, right? He goes, yes. Okay, that was my question. Now let me tell you something, right? And I told them that, listen, you know, it, it's, you know, th there's a reason why you need seven years minimum in New York area to, in order to be qualified to take a master exam, whether it's a master electrician, master plumber, is a reason for that, right? Because, and that's minimum suggested, minimum, actually not suggested, minimum requirement. But the first couple years when you're doing that, you're digging the trenches, you're doing repetitive work. Like It feels like you're in Groundhog's Day, day after day after day. And I'm sure, listen, if I was 19, 20 years old, you know, making you know, making good money, probably you make at least seven hundred, eight hundred, a thousand dollars a week, right? You have to put your time in. That's the whole more of the story. It's like he did not want to put the time in. It's the bottom line, Mike. You know that shit, bro. They don't, don't, don't rag the fucking youngsters, and it's up to them to fucking defeat the challenge. Yeah, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I am going to get some homeowner hands-on here. He's been helicoptering all morning. I don't mind it because he's a nice guy. He's a very nice guy. And we're going to, for his first time ever in his career, now he's retired, he is going to press Mega Press G. Here we go. All right. This wildebeest right here, it's expensive. All right. This is the Milwaukee M18 Force Logic press machine with a three quarter inch Vega, right, uh, press head on it. And this is specifically for black pipe three quarter okay now the way this works is that the ring is going to go over the fitting we're going to clamp it down and we push the button quite simple and this connection here and that connection that just fell into the floor uncut unedited raw all right is going to be pressed to the point where it will never ever ever fall apart and so the, it's right on there you're going to just push the trigger in for about a, a second and a half Ready? And you can let go of the trigger. Go. Nope. Keep going. There you go. Okay. There's one. You have three more to go. I can't do my back. Okay, no problem. You're back. It's okay. It's fine. But it's heavy machine. So now here we are there. I'm going to push that in there. There's number two. You know what? Maybe. Let's just see. I should be marking this, but there we go. You know what? Give me the camera. You press it in. I got it pressed. Go. And one more. See? Yep. It should be. Bingo. Done. So, any thoughts and feedback? Good. Yeah? Right. That was your first time ever with a press with a press machine or ever with a Mega Press G machine? Mega Press G machine. Nice. Huge shout out to Vega. Awesome. And Reem. Sweet. Iconic. So much better than the other competitors are out there, by the way. But not Renai. Like Reem and Renai, I think they're superior to the rest of the stuff that's out there. Beautiful stuff. I yeah, I am an idiot. So it is um a Seven minutes after 12, I got my single uh, gang box receptacle uh, mounted to this piece of plywood right here. I got my GCFI or GFC, ground fault circuit interrupter, right here. I did a nice job, even wrapped it with some electric tape, right? And um, yeah, I'm just going to hang it right there, right? Because I'm a, an idiot. <laughs> Literally, I made it look so 
tits and it's not inside the box. Dan, you know what I could do? I could take a grinder and just cut a slice in there. Stick it in there. I could do that, but that would be like really like ghetto gangster like hack work and hacks bring me stacks. Not the hacks workery that I do bring me stacks, but let's redo this. All right, box is mounted. Power's on. Nicey nice. What, am I retarded here? Is there an internal switch? I don't know. Is there normally a light on these things? Well, there you go. Sweet Wi-Fi setup. I know what it is. All right, so we have a set point of 130. How's that water over there? Nice and hot? It's fucking hot. Effing hot. Balls hot. Balls All right. Hot. Like in the middle of the summer in an attic. Worse. Switching like a momser. Yeah. All right. So on a tankless water heater, 130 degrees. I like that number. If you had infants, toddlers, preteens, irresponsible teenagers, or just that 20 plus year old kid that won't get the F out of the house so you can be an empty nester, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. right? 130 is a good number. Okay. Right? And the reason for that is when you're in the shower, right, you turn the hot water on, and the hotter the water temperature is, you have to mix with more cold water so you have more better volume of water. Because when you're sending hot water through this machine, a very you know, you have small passageways inside this machine. Yes, we have full three-quarter piping going to it. We have three-quarter inlet and outlets on this, but you know inside there are small little nooks and crannies where guess what? It's not three-quarter in size anymore. So if we could minimize the amount of hot water. For mixed water at a faucet, for example, or a shower or a tub, for example, right? And you give it more cold water, you'll have more volume of water at the faucet. Also, increasing the 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 the, uh, the uh, consec or co uh, consecutive consecutive right concurrent yeah concurrent use of time of water. Because let's say this to give six point five gallons per minute. If you're in a shower using five gallons of water per minute, it's not full five, you know, it's not all five of gallons of hot water an hour. A, a minute coming out of that, maybe it's two gallons. Or maybe it's a gallon and a half. You'll have more hot water for elsewhere, so you don't exceed the capacity. Understood. But if you had toddlers or irresponsible kids that, you know, just were going to get burnt easily, 130 degrees, you know, is, is not a, a joke of a temperature. You know, you can get uh, seriously hurt. And what's the GPM on that? I believe it's 6.5. It's 11. It's 11? It's 11. Get the front door. Shut the front door, Daniel. It's 11 right. gallons per minute. Yeah. And how many degrees temperature rise? Uh, oh, I got I him. Top, yeah. Let's go to the manual. So we're at the manual. There it is, right? See? Looks like it, too. Page 11. Product information. That's temperature drop curve. Temperature rise curve. Okay. We have a 199,000 BTU model. At a 20 degree temperature rise, or 20 degree delta T, a little over 11 gallons a minute. Let's switch over to 40 degrees delta T, right? And we are at a little under 10, all right? Let's go to 60 degrees. What do you think the incoming water temperature is in the summertime at the tap? 60 degrees? 70? You think it's 70? No, I think it's closer to 60. So, yes, so at a, a 60 degree temperature rise or 60 degree delta T, we are at 6.6 .6 gallons, or 6.5, right, which is what right. I, see, I was right. right. I don't want to say it. I don't want to claim it, but now let's go to the winter, right? We have an 80 degree delta T. The water's not freezing, but it's probably maybe 50, 55, 60 degrees. Yeah. 80 degree temperature rise, hair, a sea hair. You know what a sea hair means? Eggs. Shh, come on. We have, on yeah, but on YouTube, you know, there are maybe little kids. See here. It's a see you next Tuesday hair. I didn't know you were going to call it. It's okay. You're going to edit that out, right? No, absolutely not. The, the purpose of my channel is to be uncut, unedited, okay. raw. Okay. All right, but there you go. So we're good.
Sweet. Oh, look, he got us ice. Are they cold cans of Diet Pepsi? Sugar, sugar zero? Yeah, sugar zero. You'll like it. Zero sugar. I like, I it. like it. Let's see. Hold on. You know, just recently, I started drinking Diet Soda. I don't really like to drink soda at all, but I started drinking Diet Soda. You know what? It's growing on me, but I, I can't. I, I just can't. I don't like soda. I'd rather drink water. It's better than the regular Pepsi. It tastes better. Coke. Pepsi's better than Coke. I forget you on what I said. Hey, you got any Grey Goose? No. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry. It's okay. No, I'm, don't, I'm just joking. I know you're joking. I know. But in, let's see, it's 12, 30, 12, 12 45 right now. 145, 245, 345, 445, 545, 645. In six hours from now, I am going to be on a plane from JFK to MCO. You know what I'm doing in Florida at MCO? Oh, that's what MCO stands for? Yeah, MCO, yeah. Was, you, you ever notice on my schedule where I'm not around, there's like a three-digit like letter code uh, on the schedule? Yeah. So like yet last week was YSL. That is not... You see no, it was not them. <laughs> oh, oh, YUL. That was Montreal International Airport. Oh, I thought that was like a Jewish holiday. No, 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 no. Oh, well, YUL yeah. is Montreal. International Airport, uh, whatever his name is, the name of the airport. That's where I was last week. Okay. <laughs> MCO is the airport code for Orlando. Like BNI, you're going to see, not BNI. BNI is Nashville. Nashville, that's where I'm going next the week after that with the with the WeFay. WeFay, you know, it's my friend WeFay, not, you know, Wi-Fi. WeFay. Yeah. So anyway, f tonight I'm going to Orlando. I'm doing something crazy in Florida. I really am. Three people so far, and maybe more than right now, have taken me up on this offer. In order to celebrate the grand opening of Pipe Doctor Home Services, the expansion into Central Florida, Orlando region. By the way, it's very cutthroat down there. But these hacks, my God, disgusting work that they do. So I'm doing something crazy. To celebrate the grand opening and expansion of Pipe Doctor into Central Florida. This sounds insane. And it also sounds, if it's too good to be true, it usually is, but it's not. I am going to repair central air conditioning systems in the Orlando area, in Orange and Seminole County. And sometimes I'll go into Volusia a little bit, or tomorrow I'm going a little bit north of the villages. And I'd really love to see John Phillips plumbing. John Phillips, the plumber in Sarasota, but a little too far. And he's also a big, big, big Biden supporter. But he doesn't, re he doesn't know that Biden dropped out of the race because he's an old man. Anyway, I'm going into central Florida to do something that no one else has ever done. I am giving away repairs and service calls for the entire month of September. If you have a residential central air conditioning system that you need a repair on, you're going to call me. And as long as the part costs me under $100 or less, $100 or less, the repair will be free. So that basically excludes only thing that it could possibly exclude. Maybe a very sophisticated control board. Maybe. You know, where my cost is over $100. Uh, blower motors and compressors. But everything else is covered. So if you need like a couple hands of Puron, I got you covered. You need a capacitor, I got you covered. You need a capa uh, contactor, got you covered. You need the acid to clean the coil, which we're going to do after we're done with the service call because we're going to do a full maintenance on it, it's covered. We're basically going to collect nothing from you whatsoever. Absolutely zero charge to come and service your air conditioning system and then do maintenance on it for free. And the only thing you have to do, you hear me, Central Florida? The only thing you have to do is give me a Google review with a picture or a video. That's it. And if you don't do that, I'm going to give you a swift kick in the ass. And I'll tell you, Mikey Pipes was here. All right, so I, I got the exhaust done right now. I'm working on the fresh air intake combustion air. Okay. I think it really came out really, really nice here. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So I gotta shove this in there. I'm gonna throw a little bit of glue on that bad boy. It's a little bit of glue. I'm not worried too much about the fresh air. He's also gonna be residing the house soon. So let me close up the primer. All right, when in doubt, always close it. And let me uh, get this up there like that. Turn, and I gotta try to get you guys fed. I know you guys are hungry. See, see how I feed you? You guys, my beautiful, lovely, sexy subscribers. 
Look at that. Beautiful. Now, I'm going to get my drill. Where the hell is my drill? Where's my drill? This one? Yeah. Sweet. And now, Now I know no one's going to die here. Ain't that lovely? Ain't life wonderful? Wonderful. Ain't life wonderful? All right. 126. We got the ream outdoor condensing unit out here. Uh, we got a nice job. We rerouted the line set. The line set was coming out of this hole originally right here. This is now the exhaust for our tankless water heater this is gonna be the fresh air i'm gonna cut this back um actually yeah i'm probably gonna cut this back no i'm not i'm gonna put a 45 right here drop this down this we're going to uh come up actually you know this one will come across and just elbow down right here so we have some separation from our exhaust so we have no possible means of cross contamination uh, a homeowner said he's going to be residing soon, so I'm not going to go crazy with the silicone, but we'll put a nice little bead of the, around there. But the original line set came in through this hole. We enlarged that hole by putting a bit inside of a bit. Did that work out well for you, Daniel? Yeah. Perfect. We put the bit inside of the bit, and that allowed us to drill the larger hole using the existing hole as a guide. And uh, came out really nice here. You know? Really nice. If... You know, we weren't also doing the water heater at the same time with Peter, Daniel, and myself. Uh, we probably would be just about done cleaning up right now. But looks like we're about to start vacuuming down and uh, start up in commission. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, 20 minutes to two here in the great state of New York. We are right now vacuuming down our system. We are at 150 microns, right? now 150.9.8 we are doing the vacuuming down process uh part of the commissioning and startup of a new central air conditioning system or anytime you open up the refrigeration circuit is you need to vacuum out all of what we call non-condensables in this case it would be the atmosphere that's in those lines as we're making connections we're utilizing a field piece vacuum pump this is an hcfm model I think this is the VP whatever it is. I don't want to touch it. The VP whatever. Hold on. The VP67 right there. And we have it hooked up to the Echo tools. This is the True Blue evacuation kit. We're utilizing these special hoses. And these hoses are designed for vacuum purposes only. They're not meant to... Um, to be used for a pressure nitrogen or a standing pressure test it's not to be used for that it's to be used for vacuuming down or evacuation of non-condensables in the system we have it hooked up to our service ports our high and low side and we have trader car removal tools on both high and low sides you know notice we still have some wet rag residue on there it's all good we'll be using that to make sure we don't burn out the valves or the gaskets inside the valves and we're using a micron gauge this is by also eco tools this is the blue vac plus pro and utilizing that micron gauge with a ipad app by eco tools we could monitor the evacuation process the re and the vacuum process and we generally like to get under 100 microns especially on a brand new system the industry rule of thumb is you want to vacuum down to 500 microns and, you know, have a nice day. But we like to do one better than the last, and we like to go as deep as a vacuum as possible. And that's why right now we're at 115, and we're not stopping. We're going to keep going until we get a nice, deep vacuum. Then we're going to do what was called a decay test. We're going to use the formula, a mathematical formula built into the app that we use for the micron gauge. And we're going, to open, we're going to close those service valves. We're going to watch that micron gauge jump up a little bit. And then the mathematical formula of the app will tell us whether it's a good decay test 
or a bad decay test. For more information, go to Echo Tools on their Google web, their, uh, their website, and you can learn all about this stuff. If you want to buy this kit, um, I get most of our technology stuff for HVACR from True Tech Tools. And I use a promo code to save 7%, which is know-it-all, K-N-O-W-I-T-A-L-L. He happens to be a true friend of True Tech Tools. And if you use that promo code, you'll get 7% off. Don't tell anyone that Mikey Pipes told you, okay? Because I'm not a true friend. 109 and drop. All right, so right now we're on a decay test and it passed. Look at that, the decay has passed. Sweet. So essentially that means that we have a nice, tight and dry refrigeration circuit. The refrigeration circuit is the line set, you know, the liquid and the suction, our condensing coil, the evaporator coil, and the two other components that really get overlooked sometimes your metering device in this case it's a txv thermostatic expansion valve and your compressor which is outside in the condensing unit one more time for oh another decay good luck i'm just gonna open it another decay start decay okay we're gonna close both valves and we're gonna see it jump jumps up a little bit Let's see how high it goes before it gives us a passing test. Come on, teacher, I'm looking for 100. Imagine it failed the second time. That, that would suck. suck. There are some naysayers out there in the community that say you can have a leak in a refrigeration circuit and pass a decay test. There are some out there that have proven it. Proven it? Is that a word? Prove, proved it. Proved it. There it is. The decay is passed. We're going to finish and save. It went to 111 microns. Very nice. You know what? But at the end of the day, you have the majority of the HVAC industry only pulling to 500 microns. Some guys go to 300, but you want to go as low as possible when doing a startup and commissioning on a new install, whether a new install or a retrofit, a replacement here. You know, everything is replaced. The outdoor unit, the indoor unit, the copper line set. Why not? You know what? It's a little bit more, but you have a much better system. And regardless of how many times you wipe, clean, flush out the existing line set, utilizing R22 as a refrigerant, you know, it is it is what it is. Replace the line set if possible. So it's a little after 2 o'clock here in the afternoon. We've been outside, putzing around. Well, not really. Been working. Um, but look at what Peter did. Look at what he did there. Very, very, very nice. Very, very nice. So he extended the three quarter uh, with a coupling and a nipple. He uh, three quarter inch elbow came across here. And we have the, the T with the drip leg and the cap. We have a 90, we have the union. And he's going into, oh, he's gotta go all the way around. Yeah, oh yeah. He's going to go all the way around that half inch. So, um, yeah, so you got to reduce down to half inch. Either you could do a three quarter by a half inch reducing elbow there, or somewhere in this run, a, uh, a three quarter by a half inch reducing coupling, which you got right there. Perfect. And um, yeah, go into that. Yeah. Oh, you actually got three quarter already. Look at that. Yeah, I have this. Uh, yeah, but now you just need to go from here to there. And we have some condensate pipe here, three quarter for our drain. And um, looking really, really epic and amazing. Beautiful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed today's video. You guys are missing out though on a very important aspect of the whole Mikey Pipes, you know, uh, world. And that is Mikey Pipes, what are you doing with all the scrap copper that you take out of these jobs. You know, we have a plethora of scrap copper. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the answer is very simple.
You know what that is? That's a smelting furnace. So we take the scrap copper that we recover from jobs that we do, and we melt it down into bars of solid copper. And that's legit. Check it out, smelting with Mikey Pipes.